from the News Channel 5 Network. This is the plus side of Nashville. Hi everyone, I'm Tawanda Coleman. Welcome to the plus side of Nashville. If you have or you know someone who has diabetes, then you know it is a serious condition uh, that can be challenging to live with and to manage. There's type 1 and there's type 2 diabetes, and today we're going to focus on type 1 diabetes, which primarily strikes children and young adults. So there's nothing you can do to prevent it, and there is no cure. We're going to talk to the executive director of the Juvenile Diabetes Research uh, Foundation about that disease, as well as the organization's strong efforts to make type 1 type none. That's later in the show. But we're starting things off today. As many of you remember, us, those of us in Nashville can strongly relate to the 1,000-year flood that recently devastated parts of South Carolina. And 10 years ago, we experienced the same thing here in Nashville. There's also been flooding recently in parts of Texas and Mexico. So thank goodness for organizations like Hope Force International, a volunteer disaster res response team that loads up and makes their way to help with the crisis all around the world. Volunteers from the organization were just in South Carolina, but they're here with us today in Nashville, and, and we're welcoming today to, uh, to the show co-founders of Hope Force International, CEO Jack Minton and Sherry Minton, who's the Executive Vice President, and his lovely wife. Thank Welcome you. to you both. Thank you. Thank you. Tara. It's great to be here. Well, it's yeah. great to know that you're out there, because I think a lot of times when we hear about these disasters, mm. we yeah. hear Red Cross, and That's you know, true. we hear a lot about that. But you all were here 10 years ago when we had our flood. You just got back from mm. South right. Carolina. Yeah. Talk about Hope Force International, what you do, your mission, how long have you been around? Well, Hope Force International was founded in 2003, and our primary mission has to do with equipping willing volunteers to be effective in responding to disasters both at home and around the world. Yeah. You know, what we find is most people want to do something, mm -hmm. they just don't know how to get started or what the next step is. So mm -hmm. what we endeavor to do is to spend time with them, equipping them, training them, preparing them, and then creating that pathway of deployment, mm -hmm. what we call a deployment, right, in right. response to disasters both, again, here and around the world. So and you've been doing it a lot uh, over the last several years. Yeah, it's... Um, you know, um, when we when we had our flood, I think you guys said you were a bit, with two years kind of yes. helping us get back That's on right. our feet. Yes. Yes. What was your inspiration for starting an organization like this, Sherry? Well, we worked with a relief agency for about 19 years, and so we had served around the world and saw a lot of very sad, mainly pre-existing chronic need. But as we watched the news, we began to see a trend, an uptick in natural disasters here in the United States. And before long, we almost felt a tap on our shoulder saying, <laughs> you know what, pay attention to this. Yeah. There needs to be a, a clear pathway of response, and we couldn't find one. We began to do research and even paid some consultants to do some research for us. And they pretty much confirmed our, our thesis that there, there really wasn't a very clear pathway for people who wanted to respond and get out there. Now, of course, there's mm -hmm. Red Cross. Mm -hmm. uh, we were looking more at the faith-based pathway. And many of those were very denominationally centric, and we felt like we wanted to create a pathway that was broad for different streams of, of faith. Well, you all have been all around the mm. country uh, providing services, but you're here established in Nashville. Yes. Why? Because you're not from here. Why did you decide to set up here in Nashville, yeah, Jack? Um, I would love to tell you that it was a part of a major strategic plan. <laughs> that, would, that, would, that would probably sound better. And, 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 it, and certainly to an extent it yeah. was. Um, but, you know, we did enough research and tried to determine where we should locate that would put us in the best position to respond domestically. Mm -hmm. So Nashville, you think about it, most overwhelmingly the number of disasters that hit our country are really are within a day's drive yeah. of mm -hmm. where we live. You think yeah. of the cyclical weather patterns mm -hmm. of you know everything from flooding to mm -hmm. tornadoes to hurricanes. In most cases, we can pack up early that morning and be mm -hmm. there by evening. So the location is incredibly strategic. And, you know, again, the longer we're here, the more we realize mm -hmm. what a wonderful community it is and how ready they are to volunteer and to jump in and to yeah, serve. Wonderful. So it's been incredible. Well, if somebody wanted to, to become a part of the program and volunteer, I think you call them your re reservists. 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 Uh -huh. How does yes. someone become a reservist? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> and we hope everybody hears this. <laughs> <laughs> 
we what we have is a, a training program. First of all, we want to make it easy, so we offer them our, our email address, info at hopeforce.org, and they start with that, and then they just say they'd like to take a training. And from that point on, uh, they, they will be notified of upcoming locations for our training, which we have them across the United States, even in Mexico, and hopefully soon in Canada. But um, they, the training really focuses on preparing the responder for the attitudinal, emotional, the rigors of disaster response. We don't want to send them out into scenarios that really are really hard to absorb if you're not prepared for, for that. And I think also what we want to do is have a, a common training where people converging from, which just happened, California, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Florida, from all across the country, they come in, they've had seamless training, they all know, even though they haven't worked together, they understand what is expected of them. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we're always asked, where do you get your volunteers? We, we partner with the Salvation Army, they're our national partners. And they have, I think they've hired like 14 of our reservists. Oh, wow. <laughs> so we're kind of like an employment oh, wow. agency. And it does seem that way. Obviously, <laughs> you do good work and yeah. train these people very, very they're well. They're wonderful. Yeah. Well, I can't yeah. wait. We're about to meet a couple of your yes. reservists. Absolutely. Yeah, and we want to talk more about yeah. Hope Force International. We're yeah. going to take a break. Great. When we come back, we're going to meet two of the members and hear about what it's like to be a volunteer with this wonderful organization. So stay with us. We'll be right back.